What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. Threaten to k me? I'll take your life away instead. Evening Reddit, apologies for the length for this in advance, but Bill Shaky, I am not, so I'll most likely go off on a tangent a lot. Possibly constantly, actually. Hey, me too. This particular story has just come to a head today, largely thanks to the persistently predictable actions of this story's antagonist, who we'll call Lovehead, because that's what he is. Around a year ago ish, I moved into a new apartment. Apartment. Not in a great part of the city, but could be considered bang average. When I first moved in, I was assured everything would be rosy and I'd be left to my own devices. Enter Lovehead. Lovehead is, as his name suggests, a total piece of feces. He has shared custody of his son, which is frankly an oversight of the legal system, but hey. And he absolutely loves to get plastered and scream at the kid, either via phone or in person. The kid is around 13 I think, and his name's not totally important, mainly because the kids got enough grief. This went on for about two to three months, so I tried befriending Lovehead, mostly because I'm an idiot, but also to find out just what his issue was. Because having headphones in on max volume listening to heavy metal and still being able to hear Lovehead screaming was becoming an issue, to say the least. I put up with it for a bit, mentioning it in passing to who I guess is my building manager. He's really just a guy that's lived there for years and is mates with the landlord and he's retired, so can't really blame him for not wanting to get involved. He did mention that Lovehead had lived there for about five years and had numerous complaints, including from the previous tenants who'd moved out because she'd had enough of his bullcrap. He also mentioned that Lovehead had shared custody because Lovehead's ex was also a bit of a twat. Like, seriously, that poor kid. But as such, meant an absolute Christload of social workers were involved, even if they clearly weren't very good at their jobs. Anyway, one day, Lovehead was screaming at the top of his lungs again and again. Because I'm an idiot, I poked the ceiling with a broom. Just a little tap to say, Hey friend, just a quick polite note to tell you that the whole freaking neighborhood can hear you! Sorry, that's as loud as I can be right now. <laughs> Which was greeted by five thuds that sounded like Frickhead, sorry, Lovehead, was about to bunker bust clean through the ceiling. This naturally pissed me off, so I knocked on his door and he simply opened it and told me to step off. Fair enough, I thought, as frankly, I had better crap to do, so I went for a walk. Upon return, Lovehead is putting his bins out and starts to give me grief, which I returned in kind, causing him to square up to me and threaten to kill me. I held my ground and he started going on about respect and crap. <laughs> Oh no, my butt's on the ground, it fell off, I laughed too hard. No, really. And he told me he held all the cards and there was nothing I could do. Unfortunate, but I simply said, if that's how you want to be, then that's how it is, and left him to have his little hissy fit outside. First call was to the police, who took it surprisingly seriously. They came out within an hour and we sat in the panda car and discussed all of Lovehead's transgressions, a lot of which I had recorded, mainly to WhatsApp to my friends like, hey, Lovehead's at it again. Oh, sorry. Richard Head is at it again. They took a statement, said there was likely nothing they could do, but they might investigate Lovehead on the account of the child abuse and the social worker in place. I then asked them if evidence would help, and they replied it'd save them a lot of time if I could get some, but would need to be recent. Last three months okay? Sure, they say, but three months is a long time, and he might might have changed. No, 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 Mr. Policeman Officer. I mean covering the last three months. Excited he was, to say the least. So they brought me to the station to give a statement and to copy all the evidence off my phone. At this point, big shout out to old phones and removable SD cards, as I really didn't want to explain my meme collection. They spent the next two, maybe three months investigating Lovehead, as there's a lot of banging to be heard in the videos. <laughs> 
which I can only assume is Lovehead assuming his final Lovehead form. A few months go by, and I'm seeing a lot of open immediately, do not ignore type letters arriving in Lovehead's name, which I think might be off the social workers, but I'm not sure. I do feel particularly bad about this bit, as being a violently abusive alcoholic, he's not quite smart enough to realize it's me that's making his life suck, because the social are on him like a skid mark on a toilet, and he's just screaming at his kid even more because he thinks the kid has grassed him up. Eventually, police have everything in place and serve him with a sort of behavioral order or some crap like that, which frankly wasn't a whole lot, but that was more of an aperitif for the meal the social were about to make. Yesterday, armed with a bunch of evidence, a bunch of people, two uniformed officers, and my landlord, they arrived at his flat. Partly because that's the only time my landlord had free, and probably partly because Saturday pay for cops and social workers must be fairly decent. Also partly because he has his kids on weekends. Actually, probably the main reason that I think about it. Since Lovehead has the kind of voice that makes Brian Blessed sound like a cross between a mime and a church mouse, they can hear everything immediately. They go up into the tight hallways, which is kind of funny because they're all trying to social distance, so it kind of looks like they're queuing up to give Lovehead a bollocking, in true British fashion. It ended with Lovehead being led away in cuffs because, of course, he fought back. The guy's a, a doofus. It's totally in his nature. He's since come back today with a very defeated look on his face. Turns out the behavior order was a bit of a warning, and they'd been watching the house on and off all week. Super glad I gave up smoking weed at this point. And they've heard some of the Dolby surround sound conversations and have now charged him with a bunch of crap I frankly don't understand. I'm not a cop, and I know mostly crap all about the law except the ones I don't like, which has had and will have several knock-on effects. Firstly, no more contact with his kid, a minor victory since his mom is a bit of a cooter, but they're under a microscope now, so maybe that'll help. Secondly, my landlord was especially not chill about being contacted by both me and the police regarding Lovehead, so is using one of the charges or something to speed up the eviction process. This is annoyingly still going to take about two weeks, but I'm sure I'll live. Meaning, it's not the current six-month Brovid guidelines. Thirdly, he's going to have to go in tomorrow and tell his boss that he's going to need multiple dates off in the possible near future for court dates, etc. Oof, tough break in this economy. That's likely going to cost too. Especially since I've seen a bunch of letters from the Providence arriving for him. For those outside the UK, the Providence is kind of like the OG version of those short-term loans with insane interest rates. If you're in the UK, give them a wide berth. All this could have been avoided had Lovehead just not been, well, a Lovehead. At least in two weeks or so, I might be able to have a decent night's sleep if it's not ruined by 2 a.m. ambulance sirens or that butthole with a three-inch exhaust on a Civic. It'd be time for me to move, actually. At it. Oh, the crap has picked up some interest. Cheers for all the nice comments and awards. And remember, kids, General Kitchener wants you to 4D chess people like Lovehead because you can probably checkmate them before they finished eating the pieces. Whoa, good job, dude. Local hero who <laughs> just wanted some sleep. Speaking of sleep, I'm really tired. I don't know why I'm tired, but I'm tired. Woo, wait, I had pancakes. Anyway, uh, good job, OP. I'm, I really hope that kid uh, has a little bit of a less poopy life right now. Um, yeah, don't be parents if you're gonna be a mean parent, you know? I don't know why people, <laughs> I don't know why people don't just like live by that logic, you know what I'm saying? Just think, am I gonna be a mean parent? And if you are, don't have kids. So simple. Foolproof plan to have 100% good parents. This story's called Never Bully Your Insurance Company or You Lose Your Franchise. Hello all, excuse my poor grammar or spelling, I'm on mobile. This story comes from a friend of mine, Sarah, and has been building for almost five years until it all came crashing down over the last week. A few things to note before I get into it. Sarah works at an insurance company dealing with a massive nationwide delivery company. Her company insures all the delivery trucks. Over the years, Sarah had seen her fair share of anger from callers, mostly justified or people letting off steam at the anonymous voice on the other end of the phone. She's learned not to take it personally. She absolutely despises the owner of one particular franchise depot, Dick. On to the story. 
history. We start in 2016. Dick is the franchisee of a vehicle depot for a delivery company, meaning he's sort of an owner, but the company CEO could take away his ownership if they felt like it. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but as far as I understand, it's a fairly standard franchise contract. So anyone who knows about these things should have a rough idea of what Dick has to do. Dick calls in for the first time to talk to Sarah about a claim one of his drivers is making. Something simple, reversed into a wall, minimal damage, but claiming to get the vehicle repaired. Dick starts ranting and screaming about how dare he, his driver, be expecting to pay an excess standard. Sarah has dealt with people like this all her career, so she just deals with it as she always does. And so it continues for two years, with Dick bullying and abusing any call handler when he calls about a claim. It's annoying, and plenty of people have been brought to tears by it, but they can't stop serving him because he is responsible for dealing with his franchise's claims. It's now 2018, and Dick decides to get himself arrested. To give you an idea of just how stupid this man is, one of his drivers had been in a really bad accident. Nobody was seriously hurt, but the van was badly damaged. So while it was being repaired, Sarah organized for a hire van. Dick goes to the hire company to collect the van and he's asked to make a one pound payment by debit credit card to secure the vehicle. I'm sure it's so that the hire company can just charge it for any damage caused while on hire, and is an industry standard in my country. Dick doesn't like this. He argues with the hire company. He threatens to dump the hire vehicle once he's finished with it. Finally, he punches the poor bloke working the front desk. As previously stated, Dick gets arrested. Fast forward to a few months ago. Everyone is working working from home. Yay, lockdown! And most people understand this. Everyone except Dick. He must be having a particularly bad day because his tantrum about how useless Sarah and her company is descends into personal insults. Sarah, having an equally bad day, decides that now is the moment she will get revenge on this guy for everything he has put every claim handler through. So she requests a copy of the recording of the call. All calls are recorded for safety, complaints, and calling people out on their bullcrap. She then sends this recording to three people. One, her manager, saying she refuses to speak to Dick due to his abusive behavior. The rest of the team agree, and suddenly there is not a single claims handler willing to speak to this man. Manager says he will sort something. Two, Dick's boss, simply stating that his behavior is unacceptable, and the next time he tries to speak to someone at an insurance company, that way, they will will end the call. 3. Every listed CEO or board member of Dick's company. She wanted all of them to know just how vile this man was. Then, today, she gets the call she's been waiting for. A representative of delivery company has called, wanting to apologize for everything Dick put her and her team through. He also gives the best news. Dick has been downgraded from franchise owner to a lowly delivery driver. His lovely pay package, benefits, annual bonus, and company-funded car, a brand new Mercedes for anyone interested, have all been taken away. He now earns a little over minimum wage, 60 hours a week to pay his bills, with his reputation in tatters. If he doesn't meet the standard for delivery drivers within the next three months, he'll be fired. Sarah also learned from someone she knows in the company that his wife is divorcing him because he told her she needs to get a job or they'll lose the house thanks to his sudden drop in income. Sarah hasn't yet met the new franchisee, but if I know her, she'll make it clear that she's the one who ruined Dick's life, and she isn't afraid to do it again if the new guy doesn't treat her and her colleagues with respect. Lesson: Don't be a penis to call center employees. Hey! First, thank you all for liking, and especially to those of you who have given awards. Second, I want to emphasize for those who have commented on the 
franchise part of things, I have very limited knowledge on how this works. As far as Sarah and I know, Dick started as an employee of this place, then got the money to buy the franchise. There's something in the contracts that allows the company to take away his franchise, and since he was formerly a driver, he was given that job back on probation. Third, for the person who pointed out the description of lowly delivery driver, I should have made this more clear. There, this is in no way demeaning the job of these wonderful people. It's how Dick always described the position when he called. <laughs> I didn't get the impression that they were being condescending. Um, it's like, oh, it's just little old me. Obviously, you're not little. You're a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Um, wow, that guy was a jerk. I'm glad he got what was coming to him, and I'm glad that the corporate people took this seriously. That makes me really happy. Also, the Dr. Pepper cream soda is so good, man. Woo! This story's called... I was fired and made the company lose over a hundred thousand pounds. Doctors hate him. <laughs> so I used to work at a family-run builder's merchant and was a trade sales advisor. I was fired for bringing up health and safety concerns in an email sent to a manager and for the fact I was apparently unhappy in my role. I did nothing wrong, but they still sacked me. Now, when I worked there, I had clients that I had built good relationships with and even become friends with some of them. They would get me beers and whiskey at Christmas or have barbecues and so on outside of work. Anyway, back to the revenge. I was fired, which in my opinion was unfair and it was during this brovid 19 pandemic, I had worked the entire way through it until I was fired. So I wanted revenge. I contacted multiple clients and friends. Most of them say, okay, we won't use the company if they treat the staff the way they did to me. One client easily spends over a hundred thousand pounds a year, easily in the top three customers they had. He used them because I would get him the best prices, etc, etc. As soon as I'm fired, I call him and let him know what happened and he straight away promised is not to use them again. So big middle finger to the owners of that crap hole. I hope you learn to treat your employees better or go under. Slide update, just reading some comments. I did contact ACAS. Someone was complaining in the comments when I said that incorrectly. ACAS, sorry I'm not a lame European. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I love you Europeans. Mwah, mwah. See cheek kisses, I'm so European. <laughs> uh, ACAS, they are investigating. How and safety and I don't even know if that was right. I just know that they said I said it wrong. ACAS. Sorry, I interrupted myself. Health and safety executives did visit and told them to put a few things right, but nothing else. I did have video and photo evidence of one accident actually happening and many other issues. I don't have a copy of the email, but ACAS can find it on their internal mail system as it never truly disappears. Also, any clients I contacted were friends. I didn't contact a huge huge list of clients, just a handful, letting them know I no longer worked for the company. They asked why I got fired and I gave them an honest answer. I did not ask them to stop using them as at the end of the day, if they offer the best prices, they would still use them, but that's not the case. All right, morally sound individual, it's okay. <laughs> I promise you guys, I'm not a sarcastic, okay, I am a sarcastic jerk, but it's mostly just to be goofy. I'm not mocking nobody as much as you want to be mocked so you can, yell at people for it. I know you guys, some of you at least, you know who you are. <laughs> anyway, uh, good job, OP. I'm sorry you lost your job. That really sucks. That'd be terrifying if I was, if I was you, Whew. but I'm assuming you're out of it now and you've got, you know, happiness present in your life and in your future and hopefully heartbreak so strong just so that you know that you love someone that much. Oh, Zach is so sweet and so cliche. Um, anyway, peace out guys. I'm gonna take a nap screw bobble. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.